The one thing that just uh, touching on the elbow shoulder use, because obviously you guys are going to spend some time on elbow shoulder use, and I'll, I will definitely be seeing more of you guys uh, in the near future. But the whole thing with elbow shoulder use that that it, when we talked about the idea of um, blocking and reacting and understanding that elbow shoulder use is still a reactive save because we're we're not just filling space where you we're making sure we're getting out of that space to make that save, but it's a it's a shorter distance reaction to utilize with your elbow as you go into the save attempt. But the biggest thing to understand is that it's not just your elbow that is the the save attempt. It's where your coverage actually comes from is from your lean. And what Nick talked about, about the whole idea of, of being forward. That's why it's super important to, to stay forward on those on situations, especially in tight, is because we're taking away more vertical space. If I lift my elbow all the way to the ceiling, what well, that that doesn't give me a lot of coverage to that side of my head. But if I get my body moving over to that side of the coverage, that's where my coverage comes from. I'm still utilizing my body unit to make the save, but it's just a matter of we're reacting shorter distances to get our elbow to those spots. Um, again, once you drill it, you'll have a better understanding, but it's just a matter of like understanding that the majority of our saves that we make, especially nowadays, the way the game is played is they're reactive saves. You're, if you had to, if you had to break it down to the idea of like percentage wise, it's probably 90 to 95% of your save attempts are going to be reactive. It's just a matter of understanding the awareness of when we should be compact, but still being loose. The one thing that happens when we talk about blocking and eliminating holes is everybody thinks it's about space and they get down and they get super tight and they're rigid. And as soon as we're rigid, there's resistance. Anytime we're rigid, there's going to be resistance. If you try it right now and you flex your arm and push your arm down, you're going to feel that there's resistance there. Now think about having somebody throw something at you as there's resistance there and you have to try to catch it. It's going to be hard. Where if we're loose, loose is fast. So even as we block, we're not blocking to be tight so no water can pour through there. It's a puck that we're trying to stop. We still have to have the availability of moving into a save attempt because at the end of the day, that's the important part of our job. Nick talked about the, the idea of at the, at the very beginning, the save process, shot preparation, save execution, post save response, and the time that we spend in those things, I want you to understand that, yeah, we spend more, way more time in the movement phase, so way more time in the shot preparation phase than we do the save execution phase, but the save execution phase is the most important. And the reason that I say that is because I know lots of goalies. I've been, tra- I've been coaching goalies for close to 20 years now, and there's lots of kids that got very, very good at just moving, but they couldn't actually make a save. They could get into position, but the reality is, is, is what's what's more important? And I'll ask, I'll, I'm going to ask this que- question. And I hope somebody answers me. What's more important, the space that you fill or the space that you don't fill? Anybody? Anybody want to answer that one? I guess Did anybody I'm- here? Did everybody just say, "Hey, I'm attending," and they walked away? Don't fill. Don't, Jack there you Hunter, go. don't fill. Yes. <laughs> Why, Jack? You're absolutely right, Jack. Why? It's, it's it's the space that you don't fill is more important. Why? Because that's where like the puck can go. That's where goals are scored. That. Absolutely, that's where goals are scored. Goals are scored in the scored in the space that we don't fill. So the whole idea is, is by being good in the sh- in the shot preparation phase and putting ourselves in good position. That's great, but at the same time, we still have to make a save. And so this is where the, the, where I'm going with this with this uh, conversation here is. The whole thing when we talk about practice, okay? One of the th- biggest things that when we talk about practice is head coaches have no idea what it is that we go through as goaltenders. They have no idea. So most of the time, practice, what do they want? They want more shots, more shots, more shots. I'm going to tell you right now, that's the last thing you need. The last thing you need is more shots. If you think about a game, let's just say 30, 30 saves a game on average, we'll say. I know lots of you have more than 30 saves a game, but 30 saves a game on average. If there's 30 saves, 30 saves a game on average, how many shots do you see during practice? Well, probably close to 300. So when we talk about those things, when, we, when, we're, when we're actually breaking down what it is that we do, there's going to be a lot of situations where in practice, your coach is going to want you to not practice the way you play the game. It's detrimental. So let's, let's focus on now. If, if there's a drill where there's lots of shots, or hey, there's a three-line shooting drill, there's shots coming from all three lines, well, what can we work on there? You're not going to work on the shot preparation phase because if you're trying to move around all the time to be in position on every one, you're going to fall behind plays all the time. You're not going to work on the post-save phase because if there's three shots, you make a first save and you follow a rebound and it goes the other way. Second guy's coming into an empty net. So this is where we, we can get into the idea of our save execution. In a drill where there's multiple shots and, and it's challenging for you scrambling around, my advice to you, go back to your goal line. Hang out on your goal line and watch that shot. Start to read shot release off of sticks so we can get patient and make a save. I would rather see you in situations where there's multiple shots. I'd rather see you 
crack a puck all the way into your own net than be three feet on top of the blue paint, scrambling around trying to compete to make a save because we're not actually working on anything. It's, that, it's, it's actually detrimental because in a game, you're not going to play out that high. So when we start to read, when we start to read shot release a little bit more, what that allows for us to do is it allows for us to understand pattern recognition. When I say pattern recognition, how the shot's coming off the stick, slap shot, snap shot, toe drag, pull, push, pull. We start to read those things a lot more. We have more time to see them at practice. And when I say practice, we're on our goal line and we're working on our patience. That's going to allow for us to keep our elbows off our body. Yeah, okay. You might get scored on a little bit more at practice, but what are we doing? We're working on something. We're working on being patient. We're working on that pattern recognition. We're working on having strong save attempts because that is the most important part of the game. But a lot of times we don't, we don't, we're not allowed to work on it because there's a drill where, hey, there's six pucks in this drill. Well, how many pucks are there in a game? There's still only one, right? So we want to have that one puck focus during practice where track puck into and off of your body. But if, does, if time doesn't permit, well, let's focus on reading shot release. Mm -hmm. You guys know there, there was a study done years ago, um, a long time ago, about baseball. Okay, and they said that, ma that, that mathematics and physics say that it's not humanly possible to hit a major league, major league pitcher's fastball. It's just not possible. Well, then why does it happen? How does it happen? Is it luck? Is it just guys are closing their eyes and swinging the bat and it's just luckily hitting the ball? No, it's through pattern recognition. It's how they read and how they perceive. Again, when Nick talked about perspectives and the idea of the perspective of coverage, of that line that's straight up and down versus that line that was forward, well, what actually has more coverage? Well, it's going to be based on your perspective. If you're looking from the from the uh, nosebleed stands, this guy looks way better. But if you're actually looking where the puck is, this guy's way better. So the whole idea of that pitch and that fast ball that guys aren't, aren't physically able to hit, well, why do they hit it? It's through pattern recognition. That's through the same ideas of reading shot release. If we don't ever take the time to read those shots, well, I'm guaranteed you've seen it at some point in your careers, whether you're young or old, where goalies just go down and they're hoping that the puck hits them. Oh, please hit me, please hit me. And then, whack, oh, got me. Okay, good save. Where instead of looking at, looking at it like that, let's focus more on the save attempt. Let's work on our save attempts. It is the most important part of the game. So let's work on it. Let's work on our athleticism. Let's work on being patient. Let's work on seeing puck off stick and then, then going into our save attempts. That will allow for you to, again, enhance your elbow shoulder use in tight, as well as making more controlled saves.